Hello, I'm Ann Turnbull, and I'm happy to have a chance to share some thoughts with you about what I believe best sustains families in quality of life over the long haul. Uh, I was very privileged to have a son, Jay Turnbull, who had significant disabilities. It's hard to put that in the past tense because Jay died very unexpectedly about a year and a half ago when he was 41 years old. He still, however, is such a vital and ever-present force in my life. I say that I was privileged because I think more than from any other experience or any other person, Jay taught me more and influenced me more about what is truly important in life. Now, there were times during some of our really challenging periods where I just really wondered, can I do this? But I found that I could, and what made the most difference is having a vision of inclusion and having a broad and deep network of family and friends and reliable allies who walk the journey of inclusion with my husband, Rudd, and me, and with our daughters, Amy and Kate, and of course with Jay in the center. I have been reflecting lately on the Robert Frost poem, The Road Not Taken, and I want to share the first verse with you. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry that I could not travel both, and be one traveler long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Throughout Jay's lifespan, it always was a choice of whether we were going to take the road to inclusion or the road to segregation. And there were so many pulls and so many comments to be realistic and to accept the extent of his disability and to settle for second-class citizenship. But I'm really happy to say that we were able to overcome the pull to that road and stay on the pull to inclusion primarily because of the support and partnership from so many people. One of the things that made the most difference for our family is a strategy that we call group action planning. Within the field, the term is often used person-centered planning. Person-centered planning means pulling together family and friends and reliable allies, professionals, and typical community citizens to come together and to figure out what will it take to create a life that will truly make Jay Turnbull's bells chime or the bells of any other person with significant disabilities. There is far more to tell about Jay's life than is possible in a short video, but I will say that the most challenging period, the time when the pull to the road most traveled to segregation was the strongest and the fiercest, was when he was finishing high school and entering adulthood. Jay, with his significant intellectual disability, with his challenges associated with autism, and with the really challenging bipolar cycle that he had that caused him to be sometimes in the depths of depression and other times in the, the height of, of such intensity that he was unable to sleep for many nights in a row. Despite those disabilities, we were able to forego the sheltered workshop and the group homes and the little buses that take people to the bowling alley and to the donut shop and for Jay to truly have an inclusive adult life. And that was through this version group action planning of the larger idea of person-centered planning. We gathered friends and family and, and people from our community together in monthly meetings. And we were at points of desperation at times when Jay was, when the only adult program in our community really was on the road most traveled to segregation. 
There were no options unless we created the options. And so through group action planning, we first invited the people who believed in the road less traveled, who believed in inclusion, even for people with very significant challenges, and gathered those people. And for a long time, we, like so many other families, had a hard time asking other people for help. We didn't want to impose on them, and we didn't want them to feel as if that we were a burden or Jay was a burden. But we found that we, we individually invited them to gather with us, come together regularly over time, to share visions and to create solutions, that they really wanted to help us, that it was not a burden. And so the first aspect of group action planning I want to emphasize is inviting support. Having the courage to invite other people into your life and sharing openly. And what was so wonderful is we found that they were ready to reciprocate. The second aspect is creating connections. We had been to far too many boring, tedious, stressful IEP meetings where there were test scores and file folders and, and despair about Jay's future. So we decided in group action planning there would be no test reports and no folders and we would sit in our living room or family room or on our back deck and we would have snacks and we would have laughter and we would enjoy each other. We'd celebrate birthdays and celebrate special occasions and we would mourn sad occasions with everyone in the group that we became a support group not only for Jay but for each other as well. A network of friends who cared about Jay and in terms of creating connections at meetings, Jay would often sing because that was his gift and everybody would sing. And so if we were celebrating Jay's strengths and trying to keep Jay in the center with his preferences of what we were doing. Second component, creating connections. Third component, envisioning great expectations. I resonate very much with what Norman Cousin said about that he didn't worry nearly as much about false hope as he worried about false despair. We had so much false despair in Jay's life of what he couldn't do, but with our action group, it was all about what he could do instead of yes, but it was why not. And then from the creating, from the envisioning great expectations, we solved problems creatively. We came up with solutions that maybe we'd never heard of before, or maybe we'd heard a story on NPR, or read something in a magazine, or seen something on TV, we thought outside of the box. And you know what? We broke the glass ceiling <laughs> on Jay's behalf and on all of ours. And because it was so much fun to break the glass ceiling, to have that sense of triumph over obstacles, we constantly celebrated success at one meeting we had a candle of a different color for every single person there, and every candle was a different fragrance. And we lit the family candles, and we said if it were only Jay, it would be this much light. But by going around and lighting a light for every, for every person, we managed to put all of that energy together, celebrating success. So in closing, I want to go back to Robert Frost. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and Jay, Jay took the one less traveled by, and that made all the difference. Thank you. Thank you.